All right, men, listen up. You all know that sometimes women have a different view of things than we do, right? I mean, I haven't had a date in 40 year, 48 years, and I know that. So it's important to listen to what they have to say. And tonight, we're going to hear three ladies give their Catholic view on issues regarding the church and society. So please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and welcome. I'm Father Mitch Packwell. Welcome to EWTN Live where we bring you guests from all over the world. We want to go to our guest right after we take a look at today's saint who is Saint Wenceslaus. Well, this one. He was the Duke of Bohemia, born in 907, uh, but was martyred in 935. His brother wanted to be the duke and take over the, the, the rule. But, uh, uh, and one of the things he didn't like was the way his brother was bringing justice for the poor and the needy into the laws of the kingdom. And his brother simply wanted power. So he was martyred at 935. However, as I recall, he was the grandfather of Princess Dombrovka, who later married Mieczysław I of Poland and uh, brought him to become Catholic. So his faith and witness passed on through the generations and came to play the history of his neighbors up in Poland. All right, today we have three very talented ladies. You can hear them all over EWTN television and radio. They talk about anything and everything because they're interested in everything. And they have opinions on most of it. This <laughs> week, they're finishing up production of season six of their TV show, The Catholic View for Women. So please welcome these three great friends of the network, Janet Marana, Teresa Tamio, and the new kid on the block, uh, Ms. Elena Rodriguez. Welcome. Good to have you. Thank you. Good to see you, Father. Welcome. Yes. Hello, Father. Elena. <laughs> Thank you, Father. <laughs> so, how are these uh, pros? Actually, you're not that new to all this. You work in radio yes, all the time, Father. right, Elena? Very blessed to work on EWTN Open Line with you, Father. Work, work with me. She tries to run herd on my show, make sure I don't get too out of control. But yeah, we, we, we do uh, EWTN uh, Open Line. On Wednesdays, uh, you produce that show. Uh, that's Wednesdays, fun. 3 p.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. <laughs> <laughs> she knows her job. That's right. Not. That's why she runs her. But, of course, Teresa, you also are on radio yes. every morning. Catholic Connection, uh, Catholic 8 to Connection. 10 Eastern Time. Yes, yep. mm -hmm. Monday through Friday. Yep, I, I oftentimes listen to it myself. And you're uh, a regular guest often yep, on my show. Yep. Appreciate it. And if I hear something, I just call in. You do. And it's great. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> And Janet, of course, we see you on a regular basis because you do a, a lot of programs on? Well, Defending Life on EWTN. Exactly. exactly. So, <laughs> and, yeah. of course, uh, I'm the executive director of Priests for Life. Right. And so, also co-founded the Silent No More Awareness campaign, the men right. and women who speak out about the regret of their abortion. Yeah. Right. So Keeps me busy. Uh, <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I, I don't really understand people who are bored. They must not have anything to do with serving God because that's the last Never thing a dull moment. that Never our a dull Lord moment. does <laughs> no, no. is They're keep free. you bored. I mean, there's too much going on. Well, of course, I have Father Pavone as my boss, so that yeah, really keeps me hopping. There you <laughs> go. There you go. Now, one of the things that I um, want to ask you about, what are you going to be covering in this new season six? 
uh, of your production. Oh, quite a few <laughs> quite things. A few things. Yeah. yeah, and one of the, I think, um, the really challenging shows that we really think is going to get a lot of response, we, we did a show on family feuds in terms right. of how do you handle that from a a Catholic, Catholic faith perspective, perspective because right. we base a lot of our shows on This response. is not the game show. No, 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 no. it's not family Although food. that might be kind of fun. We could do a Catholic, <laughs> Catholic family yeah. food, you know. <laughs> but this is really about how do we handle strife in the family because mm -hmm. this, this comes up often. I'm sure you hear about it too, not only as a priest and confessional, but also in, in your work in, in mm -hmm. radio and TV. Where family conflicts and, and division, and, and how do you, what is the, the Catholic approach? And so we, we did, uh, taped our final show today and taking that from one of the questions from the viewers. And then we're also looking at men's ministry and the effect it has on, on women and the parishes. And we did that at our parish because we have a growing men's ministry and a number of other topics as well. Yeah. For like, for example, uh, a lot of viewers have written in to us about. Uh, raising your children, you know, and as they get older, sometimes the struggles, whether a child goes away from the church or maybe they're addicted to drugs or they're dropping out of school, all those things that makes a mother's heart very sorrowful. Mm -hmm. And we uh, spoke, delved into that topic too. Sure. You and know. Father, get this, we also talked about wine. Wine. Women wine. in wine. the new evangelization. Oh. oh. Not yeah. that wine. That's, no. how, that's good <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's good. No, of course that's good. Yes, great. We, did a, we did a whole show on the on ministry that. of wine. Uh, Kelly Walquist, who's a fellow speaker, uh, has a wonderful ministry. Mm -hmm. And Janet and I uh, ran into her at the Catholic Marketing Network and did an interview. And it's, it's a beautiful ministry, bringing women together and having a little fun, too, with the acronym, of course. And we think about the first miracle, right? Our yeah. Lord changing water into wine. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so yeah, it's a very good ministry. So that's one of our shows. So different topics. And we were talking about this today. We've kind of evolved over the, the five seasons. And in, in, when we first started we really wanted to tackle and we still do but some of these bigger issues that we're facing in our culture obviously the um, so-called same-sex marriage right. issue infertility is a big issue women um, you know the regret of abortion mm -hmm. the regret of, of contraception when they come back to the church but you know in, in speaking with our pastoral advisor father Frank and then discussing the show ideas living our everyday lives as a Catholic, the challenges of, of raising children, the challenges mm -hmm. of dealing with division in the family. You know, in addition to all the big stuff out there, we also have to be very real and say these are day-to-day -day issues that, that we're, we're dealing with. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 these are. Uh, and, you know, s some of these issues are, you know, part of the popular talk and things, but some of them also come into uh, play of uh, not just... Uh, talking heads on television, but it's also about uh, how it's uh, affecting our lives. Right. You know, as we see now in Massachusetts, that churches, they're trying to limit what churches can do if mm -hmm. they don't have transgender, transgender right. bathrooms, right. Right. things like that. And it, it, the real issues affecting religious freedom, and as the government keeps trying to move toward freedom of worship instead of freedom of religion. religion. So this is um, very important. Yeah, and, and I think too, we constantly are stressing a, a personal relationship with Christ and, and receiving the sacraments. And, yeah. and because, y you know, you get advice from the secular world and it may not be bad advice, but they're not bringing the God aspect into it. Right. And, and you, have to, you have to have the fullness of the faith. And, and so we try to do that and stress that all the time because you're not gonna be able to deal with everything effectively if you don't first have that grounding in Christ in the sacraments, so. Well, take a look at the topic that you have as a, a new and big issue, uh, namely family problems, family feuds and right. arguments. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that could have diffused a lot of it would be regular going to confession mm -hmm. for your own sins and not your spouse's sins. Right. Mm -hmm. Any number of priests will hear how, you know, um, well, you don't know what this man of mine is like. Mm -hmm. That woman, I, I don't know how I can live with that wife. You know, and, and confessing your own sins in the family mm -hmm. is a good way to diffuse this. What are some of the other issues that you try to deal with with these family problems? We, we, we talked about how to present a positive atmosphere going in first. So when, mm -hmm. when, when a family gathers together, how to set a positive tone first mm -hmm. and not, not wait until somebody else sets a negative tone. Um, kill them with kindness, if you will. Mm -hmm. So people tend to respond to kindness instead of uh, something that is threatening. Mm -hmm. And so these are all resources that you can put into practice and, and there, there has been research about this and we have experience about 
how to put these Some of us tools. more than others, but Some we won't we'll save that for another well, show. That's another <laughs> but it, show. It's, it's easier said than done. It's easier said it than is. done. And yeah. also, in other, in other terms, how to know and when to know how to walk away from the situation when you see that people are not in a receiving mode and right. it's just going to be conflictive. Mm -hmm. And very often, too, I think what happens is if there's a hurt somewhere, instead of trying to reconcile and, and forgive, first of all, to forgive first, and then try to reconcile with the person, we play in our head like a tape recorder over and over the incident. And that is a barrier to, first of all, we have, we're, we're called to forgive first. So whatever the family strife was with one person against the other person, you have, must forgive them. And then sometimes it's a lack of really communication about what really happened. And one of the things we recommend on the program is actually a Canadian psychiatrist who um, has written extensively about this, Dr. Philip Ney, and I've studied under him, is that we have to begin writing maybe what those hurts are. So write the person, write it down. Good counselors will tell you this. Write a letter down. You hurt me when. Talk about it a little bit. And then say, and I'm ready now to hear from you how I might have hurt you. And you want to kind of open up that pathway. Because otherwise, if we just keep playing that one incident, whatever it was that drove us apart, it's very negative and you're not going to move forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, you're also not just saying everybody should get along. Right. You're actually coming up with a number of strategies. communication right. strategies. strategies. Right. Mm -hmm. to help people to communicate more positively. Yes, and every show we always intersperse scripture, and Father Frank Pavone, again, our pastoral advisor, helps us with, with that. The scriptures. And the scriptures we had in the particular show on, on the uh, family feuds, you know, from a faith perspective, they were really, really They're powerful. And it really helping people get back to the basics mm -hmm. and gi giving them tools. On our website, thecatholicviewforwoman.com, we have resource after resource after suggested books, for example, on that episode. We recommended some books of our friend, Dr. Dr. Ray Grandy, uh, regarding family. And right. so really just not saying, just not talking about it and complaining about but it. And practical you know, we shared some of our experiences, mm -hmm. but then <laughs> practical steps, getting back to the basics of the faith, and then solid resources right. on the website. And of course, yeah. the other thing we brought up, what has to do with the, Teresa's newest book, is the technology that's out there right now, how that is causing division in a lot of families between mm -hmm. the postings on Facebook, the self-absorption into the selfies, and, uh, you know, it's very sad. You can go to a restaurant, and I'm sure you've experienced this, Father, where you're sitting there, you observe a family at the next table, no, and they're waiting for their food, and no one's looking no at one's each other. No one's talking to each no other. Talking to each yeah. other. They're all on their devices. Mm -hmm. And then when the food comes, then they just put down the device, and they start, and they're still not talking. It's pitiful. So, we, you know, Teresa really tackles this big time in her newest book, which is... Uh, Beyond, Beyond Me, My Selfie, and I. Available in the religious catalog, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah, well, it, it's <laughs> so, an important element because you even have folks who will text... Yes. To somebody in the same room yes, or the sitting, next room. Yes. Or yes. sitting at the table. Yes. Table together. Teenagers, Teenagers, that's how they communicate. They, communicate. they text each and other they at the same table. Yeah. Right. They look at each other eye to eye, whatever happened, eye to eye, eye, to eye communication. Contact. Right. Yes. And conflict can come from this because right. in a one-liner text, you might be joking, the other person receives it as something offensive. And they get insulted. And a whole fire is set on fire. Right. I mean, yeah. and, and, then, and then the fights over text messages? And or emails, and right? Or emails. Facebook posts, and, and on and on. Yeah. there is so much more information you put out when you have a conversation face to face. Face, it just the tone of your voice can change dramatically, and can become can turn something into a joke. Well, when I you it, miss when out people on start that. you know texting me back and forth, what I do is I see oh. You must be awake. You're texting me. I pick. I, I can call we them. speak, please? I put, can, can we pick up the phone? And I call and, them. Yeah. Because I don't want to communicate just with the texting. But uh, you know, we did a whole show about this because the technology is really breaking down uh, family relationships too. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. really is. It's uh, there are times in which it can be it's convenient. It's good. It right. has good points. Driving yeah. is not one of them. Right. Uh, right. The, the text. Yes. Your life is in but danger. There's, but there's uh, uh, there are times to use the text to right. talk, send a quick message, or, but but. The lack of interpersonal communication, right. that's problematic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything in the excess is, is not good, of course. You right. Know? right, so. right. And the, um, a couple other areas that you're, you're dealing with besides these family conflicts mm -hmm. uh, and uh, dealing, oh, matter of fact, I almost forgot. One of the things I would add, maybe you, you discussed this, but something I learned many, many, many years ago is when people are praying for each other, mm -hmm. it becomes very difficult to stay angry. Yep, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. hard to be 
to maintain anger mm -hmm. for someone you're praying for. Absolutely. And that sometimes will help a lot. So well, yeah. of course, one of the things is, is don't let the sun go down on your anger. On your anger. Mm -hmm. It's in my and, Bible. Right. <laughs> and, you know, try to, it, like I said, say, like you're saying, Father, pray. And also, too, forgive that person and don't go to bed angry. And actually interact. Yes. Yeah, right. And, yes. And, and with concern for them. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so these are very important. What are some of the other areas that you want to make sure that you... Well, we talked about putting your faith out there boldly, like faith for instance, on the front faith yeah. on the front mm -hmm. lines, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. sports figures, athletes who put their faith out publicly. Female faith, the female, female Olympians, Olympians, mm -hmm. and who are not ashamed of putting out their faith, and how the, this makes them stand stand apart from the crowd and mm -hmm. stand ap apart from other athletes, and how they even show and and the sports reporters will recognize this. Something sets them apart because they don't seem like they're tense and stressed out before they go out on a, on a, on a routine, on a gymnastics routine. Mm -hmm. And they have this overwhelming joy. It's just so conta contagious. What is it that sets them apart? Mm -hmm. And then you realize and find out when you research that this person goes to Mass every Sunday, carries a rosary in her pocket, prays the rosary often and daily, not just because there's a major Olympic competition coming, but it's part of her life and how she is setting a wonderful example for other young ladies out there. In that same episode that, that Elena is discussing, we also looked at the uh, uh, volleyball player, the beach volleyball player, right. Kerry Walsh Jennings, yeah. and how she was it, was, it, was so, uh, it was so obvious of where our culture is and how bad it is, and when that story broke uh, earlier this summer. Well, I don't know what that story she's was. A, she is a very successful uh, Olympian, obviously. She yeah. plays sure. professional beach, beach volleyball, volleyball, but she's, she says her greatest accomplishment is her family. She's married. Uh, she, I'm not sure. I don't think she's Catholic. She's Christian. And NBC, which was, of course, the host network of the Olympics, did a big story on her. And she was there in her home, and she was talking about her family. And she said, I believe I was born to have babies and play volleyball. Right. Well, you should have seen the radical you feminists had, go nuts on Twitter. Tweet, the tweet, on Twitter. It on was Twitter. As if, yes. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, wait a minute. What's, what about you know, choice? I, I, I grew up in, I'm 57, Janet's in her early 60s, and, at, and I was going to call you Astrid, but Astrid's in South <laughs> California. But you're in, it's similar close to Astrid's age, 43. Exactly, exactly same age, yeah. And so, you know, different age groups. So we grew up at a time when the women's movement well, it was all about choice. If you want to choose to stay home, that's fine. That fine. But if you want to go to work, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. And here's someone who's accomplished both, and she's admitting that. Look, the biggest, my, my greatest challenge and my greatest thrill is trying to balance everything. She says, "I love it, even mm -hmm. though it's, it's it's difficult sometimes." And she talked about how right her faith wasn't her faith was everything, and that once she finally got the fact that mm -hmm. she was sharing herself with her kids and her husband, that's what made the sports worth it. Otherwise, her, it was too self-focused. Yeah. It was all yeah. about me. And she said, "Now she was missing I'm something. Complete. I'm then, missing then something." Her kids take life and competition to the next, next level, level. Right. and and the feminists the I should say the radical feminists radical feminist had a real problem terrible. with that which terrible. was which so we looked at that okay what does this say about our culture and what does this say about the lies women have been fed I mean here she should be the epitome of the women's liberation movement right but she's not she's being attacked so. and it's uh, th this is one of the things that I've been saying over and over again about the relativistic mentality of our culture that relativists are not relativistic no. at all. No. Mm -hmm. They are, in fact, absolutists mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they don't recognize the truth between us right. and have no basis for a discussion about your values compared to my values mm -hmm. because they say there is no truth, so there's no truth between us. Then they resort to might makes right. Mm -hmm. They are dictators underneath their relativism. And in fact, most of the dictators of the last century were right. relativists. And the only choices are their choices. Exactly. And if you don't agree with their choices, then, then, you're, then you're backward, okay. you're, you're bringing us back. Or worse. You know, to, or worse. worse. Right. So mm -hmm. there is no dialogue or exchange of ideas or respectful dialogue mm -hmm. and to, to advance the argument. And any high school student who is in the debate team could tell you this, Father. It's, it's, it, there's no exchange of ideas. It's just insulting, insulting. It's almost a public recognition. If I have to uh, defend my argument with insults, it means I already know inside that I have no arguments and that I have, right. I've lost it, basically. Exactly. I have mm -hmm. to bully you because into that's the only accepting my I have. position because right. I can't right. argue. I I'm can't come too up ignorant that. to have a good mm -hmm. argument. Right. That's, right. Mm -hmm. that's what it comes down to. Yes. Right. Right. 
But it, it, but it is th this totalitarian, uh, nearly fascist uh, approach that you see on the left. Yeah. Um, that, that's a horrible thing. So that's what we try to do on the show is, is that's why we call it the Catholic view. Obviously the idea, uh, Janet's idea originally when, when uh, we first approached Doug Keck about the show was there were all these shows out there with different names and of course so we were thinking of ABC's The View which is you know, just Terrible. horrendous in terms of doesn't truly represent who women are. But we put stories out there that even f folks who are even strong in their faith may not see or may not be aware of because we're immersed in the faith because of what we do and, and our lives and we're, we're always seeing these different stories and these different instances uh, of the bias. And, and But some people, they're busy in their lives, they may not see it instinctively, they may know it. So when you put this up there and you explain, okay, this is what the feminist movement told us when we were growing up, okay? Now this is the woman who fits the role that they said was what we were supposed to have, the opportunity to quote unquote try and have it all, and yet she's being mocked and attacked and insulted. What's going on here? What is this telling us? So whom are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the church? You're going to believe the world. Well, and something like that happened to Tim Tebow as mm -hmm. well. That's yeah. right. You know, on, on the men's oh. side. It, oh. it, it, in some ways, a love of God, right. a love of your church, a love of, of being country. a family person, <laughs> mm -hmm. right. that, that's forbidden. Again, it's this totalitarian attitude that you cannot be that way. Don't you think though, and, and I, I ask you this as a priest, to me, and my husband and I, Deacon Dom, talk about this a lot, I truly believe, and, and maybe it's because of where I came from, I fell away from the faith for many years, and my husband came back to the church first, and there was a check in my spirit, and I felt really defensive, because deep down I knew in my gut, because St. Paul tells us that we all have knowledge of God in our heart, mm -hmm. and so I think some of that, I always find myself, and I, I think maybe I'm softening a little bit as I get older, praying more for those people automatically mm -hmm. because there's a stubbornness there and there is a something is going on because if they were truly at peace and they thought everything was fine you're okay I'm okay you choose your thing as you said with the relativism then what do they, they care why do they, why should they care leave us alone let us you know do it but I truly believe that they are being challenged and so I, I try mm -hmm. to pray as frustrated as I get I do try to pray for them uh, one little clue to it also is that they insist that there is no absolute truth. Right, right. When they do so, they are making an, an absolutist statement. statement. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they are blind to the way that they are absolutist. Right. And they become blind to the other absolute values that they do have and want to impose on the rest of us. Mm -hmm. So they, they are not open-minded yeah. at all. No, yeah. not at all. Yeah. That's why I used words like totalitarian. Yeah, we're, we're just so grateful to have the opportunity and, and to have Elena join us because Astrid now is going yeah, to be yeah, doing... Tell me, what would you yes. do to Astrid? What do you do, do to Astrid? Astrid. <laughs> she's okay. Astrid's oh, just fine. She's fine. She's, fine. She, she's, she's out in L.A. She's fine. She's the fine. two East Coast girls scared her. She ran to the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's actually doing the Spanish version of, of the, the Catholic, Catholic View now. In yeah. California. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, she'll, she'll be here at the network uh, the end of October and they're going to be taping for the first time the Catholic View. I mean, it's not going to be called the exact thing in Spanish, but it's going to be a right. version of that mm -hmm. on the Spanish side of the EWT. As a matter of fact, it's, it's very, very sweet. In, in, the, uh, in the opening show uh, that we recorded, we had a surprise for Elena where Astrid recorded a uh, passing the baton, yeah. passing yeah, the crown, yes. yeah. and yeah. explaining that, that she's doing the new uh, Spanish Catholic view uh, for women. So we're very excited for her. And Elena and I have known each other for, for many years, working together well, you here. You worked together in, yes. in radio. And also yes. in Mar yes. at the March for Life. March for mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Elena, the, the first thing that came to me, and I said, well, Elena would be great because she and I have a similar background she also has we both have journalism degrees and worked in news and and we both went to really good journalism school so we always have these conversations about the news business and we would email each other and what do you think of this story yeah, did you hear yeah. this and oh my goodness yeah yeah so course, I mean there's, there, there's already a relationship there and then Janet I've knew known Elena her for years from for years and network, it was just a so, natural fit so. and and um, thanks be to God Doug and and Peter said, said yes absolutely and, yeah so it's wonderful to be on the set with Janet and Teresa mm -hmm. there's never a dull moment <laughs> There's I never a silent moment. No. I, didn't, I knew that. And I, knew that. I have to be uh, uh, up on the top of my game to be able to jump in. 
and I love it. She does I love quite it because well jumping in. We let me tell you. feed she's off each good. other, yes. and we have a lot of fun. The only problem is we sit next to each other, and she's you know Spanish, and I'm Italian, so the hands are going like this, and we're like you know hitting each other. Okay, here's the boundary. And this is why we don't let you have handheld mics. That's true. They'd be out here someplace. And actually, we did one show really for Elena. It was all about her background. All about her background. Then we did another one where a family is actually uh, being missionaries in Costa Rica, so which is my homeland. That's her right. homeland. That, that was perfect. So she had, she had a little Costa home. Rican flag on the yes. set. She was and Our Lady the of the yeah. Angels. And Our Lady of the Angels. Saint of Costa Rica. Right, yeah. right. right. So, and so. Uh, I, I got a, an image of Our Lady of the Angels when I was in Costa Rica. Uh, some years ago, but my question is, did they pass the baton in English or Spanish? Oh. English. That's English. A English. Yeah. English. That's a great See, question, that's Father. Too bad. English. Yeah. yeah. English. Yes. Yeah, the top was passing English. <laughs> <But laughs> With that's... subtitles in Spanish. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, it's, you know, it, it, it's very important that we're dealing with these concerns mm -hmm. and doing so in a way that does allow a discussion. Mm -hmm. With that, uh, do you guys get into fireworks with each other? No, do you no it's yell fun. and scream. We get into we get into passionate moments. No, passionate hair moments. no hair pulling. No, no. hair pulling. No hair pulling. No hair pulling. We get no. into passionate <laughs> discussions, but it, it, passionate in defending the faith mm -hmm. and, right. and, and things that drive us nuts that we're able to vent. Yeah. I always say, right. if I didn't yes. have a radio show, I'd explode because yeah. I just I couldn't so stand it. But it's a cathartic but it's, effect. It's a cathartic effect, yeah. and mm -hmm. and oh, it's yeah. done in a, in a respectful way, even even those with whom we disagree. Mm -hmm. You know, and sure. we always we talk about it, but we look. Hey, this is you know we're, we're very direct. Also, the, mm -hmm. we, people have to know the truth. They are being just told right. lie after lie after lie, and it's it's yeah. not even, you know, as you said in, in the wonderful um, talk you gave last night for our pilgrims, and as Father Frank said, there, there's just there's no truth out there anymore. Very yeah. little. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. and you, you it, it amazes me, and the two of us talk about this all the time. Uh, how bad it is in terms of the media. It used to be, remember, maybe 10, 15 years ago, you knew they were biased and you could see it here and there. Now they're just open about it. But there, yeah. there, yeah. there were blatant. journalistic they're principles. Blatant. There were principles. That we all right. learned. Right. And that we all went into journalism school wanting right. to defend them. Right. And put the truth out there and the facts. And objectivity, go right. figure, no, gone. I very, remember very some, basic. I remember some years ago there was a study of journalism students. And one of the questions was, why do you want to be a journalist? Mm -hmm. And they said, because I want to change the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not that I want mm -hmm. to report on the world. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, they have as their goal an attempt to change the way people are and what they think, mm -hmm. not by presenting the data of life, but Presenting the world the way as they think they it should think it be. Is. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not fair and balanced reporting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and that's that's what's going on in the newsrooms right now with with this election in terms of the major candidates and, and the way the media have decided whom they're going to support and whom they need to support. On both sides. On both sides. Right. And yep. this is, you know, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do. And we don't care about being accurate. It's just what we think is the best thing for, for the country. And the they country. end up, and one of the things that drives me crazy, they'll say, well, yeah, my guy did something, but... Yours is worse, and that the, the, you know, neuters the bad of my guy. I said, no, you have to take a look at what's negative mm -hmm. and real mm -hmm. and really evaluate why it's wrong, and you can't say the other candidate's negativity is able to undo mine. Yes. Right. That doesn't, that's not the way it works, yes. you know, especially when you have... The, what I like to call the people running for office as the, they're the basket of deplorables, <laughs> not the voters. All right, we, uh, again, the CatholicViewForWomen.com is the website you can go to for them. And we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back in a couple of minutes with your questions and comments for the Catholic View. I'll sit back here and listen to them talk and answer your questions. So please call in for them. They have plenty to say.
Thank you, thank you. First of all, we want to invite all of you to do what these nice folks have done, which is to come here in the pilgrimage group. And actually, you sort of helped to stir that up a yes, lot of it. Yes, we did. Yeah. We're the, always getting our faces into something. That's into right. Into something. This is our own pilgrimage group, the Catholic Same. View for Women Pilgrimage. pilgrimage. But there are, f there are a few other folks here as well, yes. and mm -hmm. we welcome all of you and like to have you come and join us too. If you can, contact our pilgrimage department at 205-271-2966 or go to the website ewtn.com and they'll give you information about scheduling the masses, programs where you can be involved and um, all kinds of uh, information on how to get up to Hansful, places to stay, to eat, and, and we had some good food here, right? Yes, we do. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I'd love to have you come. We have some questions? Sure. Come sure. on, let's start off with Teresa. Teresa, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Connecticut, Father. Great. Thank you for taking my call. Oh, my pleasure. And what's your question? I am a godmother to many children in my family. Um, my family all knew I was a devout Catholic. They are devout. Well, they were Catholics um, <laughs> when I was asked to be a godmother. I'm curious if the ladies and yourself can give me some advice or something. When, as a godmother, I, I want them to, I want to fulfill my role as a godmother. When the children don't know their faith or they've left the faith, um, it's very frustrating for me. All right. Yeah. So what what can you do? And if you got mothers? Oh yes, yeah, yes yeah. I am, and we I think we probably all are. Uh, I it, it's it's not easy because especially when they get a little bit older and, and they start to think on their own, uh, they're going to form their own opinions. And if their own parents aren't forming them, then it could be seem very odd. You know what what you're talking about. Uh, my suggestion would be to um, try to be around them as much as possible, and offer to you know see if they want to come to mass with you. Uh, if you're going out to breakfast, maybe on you know a Sunday, uh, make it a date where you take your godchildren out. Um, you know, offer to to do things with them church-related. Mm -hmm. um, if they have any questions about the faith, know your faith. The best thing you can do is to, to have a strong relationship with the Lord yourself, and so they'll notice that change in you, mm -hmm. and just to be there for them. Even, even if they're not there yet, it's God's timing, it's not ours, but be there for them. And also pray. Pray for them yes. every single day because, mm -hmm. I mean, I was away from the church for over two decades and it was my mother-in-law's daily prayers for me to get my soul back mm -hmm. into the pews. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't hound me or say, oh, you should be going to Mass with me. Or, you know, she would take my daughters when they were little. Uh, and then eventually by the time, uh, you know, a few years went by and Father Pavone came to my parish, I saw the light. But it was her constant prayer and example to me I think that planted those seeds. So I say pray always every day for them. Mm -hmm. Being a godparent is adopting your godchild spiritually yeah. and becoming involved with the life, his life, her life, um, and making it a point to spend time with them to understand where they're coming from so that they would be open and opening up the dialogue. How's it going in school? Why don't you want to go to school? what makes you uncomfortable. Checking in, checking in, and checking in, and opening that dialogue. It's very hard, but you have to keep trying and trying and trying mm -hmm. at it. And you can say something 1,000 times and give a recommendation 1,000 times, and in it goes, and out it goes okay. the other mm -hmm. ear. So don't get disappointed. Say it a 1,000 times, and if that doesn't do it, say it another 1,000 times. Don't get tired. And also, when a birthday comes up or a graduation comes up, make it a point to offer a religious gift. Because a religious gift yeah. offers the opportunity right. for and why, why evangelism. Just for birthdays, bring presents. Right, yeah. right. Yes. Holy no, reminders. Little, yes. little I heard kids. about your good report card. Yeah. And here, yes. here is a, a prayer card. Card right. with uh, the scripture verses. Right. Especially yes. you know, if yes. the godchildren, if they play sports, well, we'll get a prayer card to St. Sebastian mm -hmm. and say, how, oh, you know, before Pager your Saint next game, athletes. pray to St. Sebastian, yes. a patron saint of people who you do sports. You may be the only person who is going to forward something to give them a holy reminder. And other people will get them, I don't know, sneakers or purses or, or whatever, go. <laughs> or, or electronics, but you may be the only one to offer that opportunity and then let them ask, what, what is the story of the saint? I want to know more. Right. We'll be prepared to give an excl explanation and then give them maybe a website where they can, they can do their own research and find out a little bit more. And if you have little ones, like the, the three and four years old and a little bit older, Give them DVDs because mm -hmm. they will listen to the DVD 
a thousand That's times right. That's right. so that even the parents <laughs> memorize the songs. <laughs> That's right. Am I right? Yes. Absolutely. And, and therefore, you may get some of the faith into the adults. Yeah. We have a question in our studio. It's, ma'am, where are you from? From Davie, Florida. Good I to live have in you. one of the most influential counties in the election, which well, is Broward County, Florida. They proud of themselves up there. So, what, <laughs> what you got for a question? What do you say to the Catholic that doesn't want to vote? It's very frustrating. You try to speak to them. Maybe you guys can give some recommendations of what you say to them. Yeah, and these would be Catholics who say, I, I, I don't know who to vote for. I just can't make a decision. I don't like either one, so I'm not going to vote. That Pretty much yes. that's it. Yep. yep. Well, well, first of all, this is not about our feelings, all right? You don't know how, how you feel towards the candidates, right, Father? And first of all, our Catholic faith, the catechism says we're supposed to vote, right? That's part of our faith. It, again, it's a principle. Right. When you have a right to something, right. you also have a co-equal responsibility That's for right. it. But, you know, at Priest for Life, we have a great web page, first of all, called politicalresponsibility.com, and we have a lot of information up there. We have one thing, which is a comparison of the two party platforms, and it's totally C3 friendly, but it just shows you, this is the two parties and what they stand on. You just read through those, and you're going to get a good idea. But then finally, we have another page called youneedtovote.org. Just go there, and we have some you information. Need to vote dot org. org. Yes, go there. We have a, a great uh, talk given by Father Pavone, but a nice article, and it will go through all the principles of our Catholic faith and why you need to place a, cast your vote this, this uh, November. And actually, don't wait to November. Early voting is going to start, and absentee ballots in a lot of the states. And, and, and also, it's not a bad idea to volunteer to work at the polling place, That's right. making sure that you bring your Catholic honesty mm -hmm. and truthfulness so that there's to no, it, so that there's no irregularities. Monkey this is what I can't understand. This is what I, and maybe it's because I'm, I'm in all these stories and, and so involved in the pro-life movement and just the mess that our culture is in morally. How can you look at what's going on in our country and not, not say, I'm not going to vote. Right. I just don't understand that. I, I, I do not understand that. And I mean, no disrespect, but we are at a point in this country where it is about, it, it's, it's gotten very bad, but it's about to get a lot worse. Right. So that's what I don't understand. I think well, people are just overwhelmed. Okay, but, but here's the thing. Our Catholic yeah. faith is so amazing. It gives us such great direction on how we are to vote. And a lot of the people that I'm dealing with in my listener audience will say the same thing, but I ask them, well, how many of you are going to the catechism and looking at what it means to have a well-formed conscience? What does the church tell us about yeah. that? Where are we supposed to go? We're supposed to go to scripture. We're supposed to go to the authoritative teachings of the church, right? And, and we are supposed to, obviously, it's fine to seek other advice, to seek counsel. Mm -hmm. But I don't know too many people who actually know what the catechism says about that, even people who, who claim to practice their faith. And it's very frustrating when we look at abortion, when we look at marriage, when we look at uh, sexually transmitted diseases, which are at epidemic proportions. I'm hearing from people it's all the 20, time about pornography 20%. addictions. Uh -huh. And, and the, we have to be involved. How can we, I mean, I think we are going to be held responsible if we don't get involved in this well, election the especially. The other thing, too, is everyone can admit, because they're frustrated, our country is going in a wrong direction, right? So that's sitting back, all, that's the polls polls say. Say. all the polls all the say, polls how can we, so you how know, can you sit back and not vote? By voting, what you're going to do is try to put a pause here, stop and try in hope to push the country back in a better it, but direction. But it takes work, Father. It takes, yes. we have okay. all these great websites and we have the catechism. Yeah, I actually did, an, you and I do our Sunday visitor webinars. And I think the week after you were on, I did one on, you know, discerning uh, media messages in an election year. And I had one woman ask the question, well, why can't my priest just tell me for whom to vote? Why can't they just tell me because I'm not into mm -hmm. politics? And I'm like, you'll spend more time on eBay looking for a pair of shoes than you will <laughs> looking up looking what up the catechism things. has to say right. or what these, and we have, I'm constantly giving resources. You're constantly giving resources. You are when you produce the radio shows. It's not that we don't have the information. We are in, in the information age. Do some work. This and is hard, but our, but our country is at stake here. Here's another idea then. In, what you do is you use your internet access to find these resources and then as a reward, after you've done that, buy the shoes. <laughs> I like that. I'm all for that. But yeah. again, Father, you know, by, by voting, you are changing history because you're not letting that decision, you're not leaving that decision to others. You're taking a commitment. And I can tell you this from the international perspective, that you're not just changing history within the borders That's of the right. United States. Point. You Excellent are point. changing history around the world. I am from Costa Rica, and I can tell you that 
when the U.S. sneezes, America, you, you the rest the of the American right. continent will mm -hmm. catch a cold. And then it spreads, to, it spreads to the rest of the world. So your responsibility in voting is not just to yourself and not just to your family, which is a precious thing to do, but you are defending a country and the world. And That's if you right. don't vote, then you can't complain about what's going on in this country. And how yeah, do you get this way? Them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to another caller. We have Joanne on the line. Hello, Joanne. Hi, Father. How are you uh, doing? I'm great. Where are you calling just, from? I'm calling from New Jersey. There you go. We've oh, got some Jersey. Jersey girls. Jersey. Yes. <laughs> what's, your, what's your question? Yes, I just have a quick comment before my question. Uh, these guys are all great, and without the right to life, there is nothing else. It all starts with life. Preach it, sister. Get, Yay. Okay, <laughs> but to get to the question, the act of contrition says at the end to avoid the near occasion of sin. There are some people who you just can't reach, and no matter what you try to do, whether they be friends or family members, you know you're, they're going to lose their cool, or you may lose your cool, and you're going to go down a bad road. So what I have found that works for me is I pray for these people, and if I'm in their company, I'm civil and pleasant, but I just about have given up in terms of trying to reach them. And is that... Uh, it works for me. I'll be 74 years old, and I do have a degree in communication. So uh, I just like to continue doing that, praying for them. And when you're in their presence, be ble pleasant, be open to conversation, but know, hey, I'm not going to go there because I don't want to get in the near occasion of sin. Mm -hmm. You have any comments no, on I, that? I think I, I think her approach she's, is a very healthy yeah. one. I think she's she's right. praying, she's the, praying for the person, and she's realizing that that could be a tense situation, and she's recognizing it. I would just add one element, mm -hmm. you know, that comes from some of what I like to do. When you're doing that, I, I agree 100 percent. Be quiet, pray, but also wait and watch for the moment when they may let down your guard, their guard, and you can sort of get them right there in the heart with some <laughs> truth, right. you know, the truth of the gospel. And then, but don't worry about arguing with them. Or just wait for that moment when they show themselves a little vulnerable, say the truth of the faith, but don't argue about it. You let the Holy Spirit bother me. Again, when you give them something from Scripture and the truth of the church, that acts like that pee underneath the princess's mattress. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will just be there to aggravate them, and He won't let them go. And you don't have to be around. You don't have to hear about it. But let it be enough to aggravate them until our Lord brings them around. I have another question. Ma'am, where are you from? Originally from Des Moines, Iowa. Good, yes. And then from Canton, Ohio, and then from Indiana, and now Augusta, Georgia. It's a whole oh, travel walk. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I'm still going. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your question or comment? Um, I believe that as women, we, we have a special charism. And you ladies are, have explained it and shown it by your life. I'm a grandmother, I have 15 grandchildren seven children and 15 grandchildren and what can as grandmothers what can we do different with our grandchildren that would keep them close to the church keep them living their faith make their faith the catholic faith alive in them because they're out they're being thrown out to the dogs i mean mm -hmm. they the challenges that they have at school and in the community are amazing and it just really is scary for, for me as a grandmother. Yeah. And so, what so would you advise? I have, She's I, oh, the grandma. I'm we'll the nana Turn right it to here. the nana. <laughs> Throw it to the nana. I have three uh, beautiful grandchildren. I have uh, Lily Grace, who's five, and uh, Lucas James is four, and Vivian Rose, who just turned a year old. And what Nana does is I make sure to give them little presents. Like uh, for Lily and Lucas, I just got them these little books that they take to, to Mass with my daughter Jennifer. And, and sometimes they'll forget them. I said, did you take your book to Mass? Oh, Nana, I forgot them. Don't worry, I'm taking it next week. So I buy them uh, little, little things like that. Uh, and they, of course, they know Nana goes to church. And when I'm around, I'll go with them, with the, their family to church. And uh, they know 
that that's important to me. That uh, going to church is important, and and we don't you know mince words about it. And uh, you know, I think you have to start when they're little and keep knowing that. Um, you know, set that example. And I have to say about Lucas, you know, he gets very impatient. And I can tell a quick funny story about him. When he was about three, he couldn't quite make it through the whole mass. And one day my daughter said, I have to get him out. So she does. And he bolts away from her and walks right, it's right before communion. And he goes, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter, so if the fool would have opened up and swallowed her down, she would have went. But she said, I said, look, Jen, that's important. He made it this time to communion. Next time he'll make it to after communion. And that's what it was. So sometimes you have to be patient and yeah. just always bring them and don't worry about if someone, like my church doesn't have a crying room. And I tell her, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. They're, they belong here. So you have to be patient. And just as the advice is, I'm not a grandfather, of course, but I spiritual was a grandson. Well, and a yeah, spiritual yes. father. Yeah, as a matter of fact, yes. I've uh, done. I'm going to about to do the second wedding of a kid of somebody who I married years ago. Mm. But the so it's not like a spiritual grandpa. But <laughs> don't forget the other component that I remember as a grandkid. This is a grandmom and grandpa, right. uh, you know, user, and that is. Mm. I remember my grandmother teaching me with her holy cards, mm -hmm. saying the oh, rosary yes. and yes. all that. Right. But don't forget the cookies and the candy. Right. I never have forgotten <laughs> those right. either. Yes. Two kinds of sweetness. Right. Them both so. We have another question from our studio audience. Ma'am, where are you from? My name is Annie Carto, and I'm from Treasure Island, Florida. Good to have you. And, and uh, I'm a no, mother. No relation to... Uh, <laughs> Long John Silver, anything, but no. what's, your, what's your question? Well, I'm a mother and a grandmother and a wife, and I'm very concerned about the five non-negotiables that I don't, I wonder why they're not heard more from what, the pulpit. What do you mean by the five non-negotiables? Abortion, euthanasia, same-sex marriage, contraception, and what's the fifth one? Cloning. Clon cloning. Human cloning. Embryonic stem cell research and human cloning. These are culture changing, life changing. Yeah. And they're coming up during this election. And I know I've asked some pastors um, why they don't preach from the pulpit. And their answer sometimes is well, it's in a pamphlet in the back of the right. narthex. Right. What, what do you, you hear from say? the pastors about why they don't talk more about that? Well, well I, I'm, I'm in a blessed parish where, where our pastor, Father Darrell Roman, in the Archdiocese of Detroit, um, preaches amazingly every week. And, and my husband's a deacon, obviously, at that parish, and so my husband is doing the same thing. So we're kind of in a unique situation. And in our area in Michigan, we have this amazing bastion of, of really good priests. However, I hear from a lot of people who ask that question. And I think it comes from, and Father Frank Pavone talks a lot about this, where maybe they've been um, misguided in thinking that they can't talk about these things for legal right, reasons. For legal reasons. Right. That is not true. Uh, we can't tell people for whom to vote, and they can't do that from the pulpit, but they certainly but they can, can talk, talk about, about the issues, the issues right. and what this means. And it, the, they say, well, they're in the back of the church. Here's the thing that I tell people is give your priest a chance to explain, encourage him to speak about it, have other people encourage him to speak about it. But if he's not comfortable with it, then it's our responsibility to, we're all called to evangelize. And so we do have the church bulletins, ask Father if you can put in an article, tell Father, look, I'll write something, I'll you know, reprint something of Priest or Life or something from EW10 or the Register, put it in the bulletin, uh, maybe organize an, an informational educational night about voting and the Catholic teaching. Mm -hmm. If your pastor, for some reason, is not willing to do it, then we need to lovingly step up to the plate because it's not just up to them. But it's also, not. too, you know, at Priests for Life, this is, you know, our, our work is to help encourage the priests. And in particular, we have a lot of resources at our Priests for Life website, priestsforlife.org. And in particular, we have a new book uh, written by Father Pavone called Proclaiming the Message of Life. Mm -hmm. And in that, he, the first few chapters talks about the reasons why pre priests feel uncomfortable. So it's written for priests and deacons. And then it has suggestions, launching points that go with the readings throughout the entire liturgical year, A, B, and C cycle for Sundays. And it gives them little launching points for those readings of how they can mess mention the life message because sometimes you know you just can't do this on respect life sunday or right by roe v wade's anniversary it's little messages that reflect jumping off the reading that are inserted 
constantly throughout the year that will help people then get those messages. But can I just add one more thing? My husband um, will be ordained in October four years, and my husband is in Deacons for Life, and he's a sidewalk counselor in Detroit, and, and preaches quite often on the life issues and on the marriage issues. In the four years that he's been a deacon, he only had one woman say that she had a little bit of a problem with something he said, and she she didn't agree with the church teaching on same-sex marriage. So that was her issue, not you know something that my husband said. And nine times out of ten, the people are coming up and saying thank you. Thank you. More they people are. want to hear it, and so I want to encourage deacons and priests out there: not, be not afraid. Do it lovingly. You know, you don't go up there and, and do fire and brimstone and blah blah blah. You do it lovingly and talk about the beautiful teachings of the church and why they mean something to us and, and to you personally. And I guarantee you people are going to say thank you. Thank yeah. you. And you know? also another different approach is if, if the pastor of a church wants to bring these up during a homily and speak about them, do it in a loving way. And this is the church teaching, which is what the pastor is, has, has been ordained to do to spread right. the good news of the gospel. But also say, say out loud, if you out in the pews happen to not agree with something that I'm saying, come look come for me, me after Great church mm -hmm. and we'll go out for coffee, we'll talk about it. Don't run out the door and steaming and fumes. Come talk to me because I'm interested in what you have to say. And I think this is also where the responsibility of the laity come in as exactly. well. Exactly. That uh, along with the lines of what you just said, Elena, if the priest speaks about something but your political affiliation disagrees with it, it's not an attack on a political party. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the it church teaching. It is a teaching. presentation the of the church teaching. Right. And as a layperson, you, you may love whichever party you belong to. There are four candidates or five candidates running for a president. And you, as a layperson, more so than a priest, have a mission and an obligation to help bring the party you love to a more Catholic point of view right. by convincing them. You're not there just to you know, batter anybody, but you are there to convince this is the truth about human nature. Well, and let's deal with that. Well, you know what it is too, Father Manch? Right now the parties are very dressed in contrast. One party is very pro-life and the other is very pro-abortion. The thing is the church's teachings are the church's teachings. So tomorrow if the parties change their position, right. the church's teaching, the church's doesn't, teaching change. doesn't change. Right. change. Exactly. Right. And that's why the piece that we've put out of Priest for Life that just takes the quotes from the current conventions, the party platforms, and we do it on a whole host of issues, and it just right line, right their words, here's the positions. And I encourage everyone to go to our website, priestforlife.org, and get a copy of that party comparison, and then see how that lines up with the church's teaching. Yeah. And, and I think to have a clear set of values, I am committed to God and his church first. first. Mm -hmm. That's right. I am then committed to the United States of America as the country where I, I take my right. oath and pledge of allegiance. And then I can be loyal to a party. But we don't, we don't, most but people don't country. look at it like that. As a, there's a man who's been following me on my Facebook page, and I'm glad he's there. I think he also listens to my radio show. And I will post articles from the Register and you know our Sunday Visitor and good articles from Priest Your Life. They give information and resources. And I posted the recent uh, wonderful voting guide that Bishop Olmsted put out from Phoenix. And I said, this is very, you know, w read this. It's simple, it's short, it's quick, but it's great on church teaching. And this man wrote, I totally disagree. I never take my faith into the voting booth. I said, what are you yes, Catholic you for? Do. The coffee and donuts? I mean, That's what's right. the point, you know? <laughs> but you know what? At the end of the day, Father, we have to pray. And uh, we have at electionprayer.com a beautiful prayer that everyone could be saying every day from now to the election. So I encourage everyone to go to electionprayer.com and pray. We're a little bit passionate about these issues. Just, like, just well, a little. Because it's important. It is we very important. Have just 60 seconds. You have a quick question? I just have a quick comment. Yeah. Um, I just uh, want to say don't under on the issue of family conflicts, don't underestimate the power of prayer. I have a bipolar condition which is very misunderstood sometimes and I've had family conflicts with my brothers and sisters, my siblings, my husband and um, we would get into the battle of the emails and it was it was awful. My siblings are very bright but they would get into these emails and it would be yeah. back and forth, they'd be around me, through me. Right. And so I finally wound up giving them the prayer of St. Anthony because my mother relied on St. Anthony a lot and also telling them that my marriage yeah. 
supersedes right. my sibling wish. Yep. Prayer. Well, there you Prayer. go. Prayer. Prayer. And Prayer. you got Prayer. in Prayer. just in that minute. That's right. Thank you very <laughs> much Thanks, Father, again. Uh, Father, for your Father. view as women. And thank all of you. And may Almighty God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And we can have the Catholic view for women and this program and all, and now we can do it in Spanish only because this network is brought to you by you. It was a woman's point of view <laughs> that set it up that way, and that was Mother, Mother Angelica. Mother Angelica. Mother Angelica. And, and so, we, like she used to say, you know, please keep us in between your gas bill, your electric bill, I add your cable bill if you pay, pay that, and we'll be able to pay all of our bills too. God bless you and thank you very much.